love to know what the initial seed of this story looked like to you when you began working on it. Uh, was it eight, nine years ago that you first, the idea first came to you? Uh, yeah, you know, I think it was actually more, but you know, it, you know, it, it somehow, you know, it, it just started with like two elements uh, in a, like a reference book and somehow, you know, we worked on it for a very long time and uh, I think after me and Sean worked together for like five years, then we came up with, uh, you know, uh, we had uh, some ideas, you know, of uh, uh, how how the story should be, and uh, you know, after that, Sean took over and wrote the script. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, we're gonna have to do a little sort of hot potato. Uh, <laughs> and Numi, I you had quite an interesting visit from one of the film's producers to show you sort of the idea of the film. Could you tell me about the visit you got and the the package you received? Well, it was actually the man next to me <laughs> who delivered the package to my house. Um, so Valtemar oh, and his producer, Fran, came to my house in London with a package um, of like three containing pieces, which was one was the lookbook um, that you created with a lot of really disturbing, beautiful, dark images. <laughs> and um, a lot of, uh, actually a lot of um, images from the film that you s j j just saw was in already in there. Like Ata was pretty much in there and like, you know, landscape and moods and stuff. So I got a pretty strong idea or sensation of what the film, what, what you wanted to do. And the script with very little dialogue and then um, a book of collected poems from Sean. And then Baltimore just stepped outside and had a cigarette and left left me with this disturbing, divine, <laughs> seductive material, <laughs> and I was trapped. <laughs> and you, I mean, you described your career as as before Lamb and um, oh, thank you, got my own. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. No. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> you've you've described um, your career as, as before Lamb and after Lamb. Why why do you see it in these two different? What was it about this project that kind of split the career? <sighs> well, I feel like um, this kind of brought me back to my roots, but also back to myself. And you know, there's nowhere to hide. You really get like stripped back to the core and it's like you are just you have to live it you have to fully be in every moment because there's there's no dialogue there's no there's nothing you can kind of uh, escape behind and me coming back to everything where everything started for me with this material maria just became a combination that made me see myself again and like got re-reminded really of why I want to do films and how I want to do films and kind of scale down instead of kind of just adding layers. Yeah. Um, and also, it, it woke me up in many ways, I think. Oh, wonderful. It's like a, like a blessing. It's lovely. And, and what was it about Newman's sensibilities as a performer that worked so well for this part, do you think? This is your uh, first time. Uh, for, for me, you know, we... we we all knew from the beginning that we really wanted to have Numi, and uh, but we knew that she she's you know she was so busy and you know it would not be a you know a big chance that she would wanted to do this. But, but I'm uh, so not hard to get. <laughs> I said yes straight away. <laughs> no, but you know I, I remember you know I, I still remember you know when I got the phone call that Numi wanted to meet us. You know I I was driving very close to my home with my producer and. You know, I, I still really remember that, you know, you have to go to London and meet her and, you know, but, you know, in in a way we, you know, because we spent so much time, um, you know, on the script and working on the script that, you know, uh, we had decided, you know, long before we start reaching out to Numi that she was the perfect, you know, Maria for us, but somehow that you know she wanted to do it was uh, amazing and you know uh, and all the things that she brought to this project was uh, 
you know, I, you know, I, I think I, I can thank her enough, you know, because uh, I'm a first director and, you know, all my actors, they were helping me so much out. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I think, you know, this is just like a, it was like just like a luxury problem for me as a director working with so, you know, great actors that, you know, was in dialogue the whole time. And uh, yeah, so, you know, I, I think I'm an extremely lucky person. <laughs> oh, wonderful. We're going to open up to questions in just a second, but I mean, we have to talk about the other star of the film, which is Arda. Um, I wanted to know, because the, the, the creature design in this is just so extraordinary, um, did the design of her change during the development of the film? Is, is what we see on screen what you first envisioned when you thought of her? Uh, I, I, yeah, you know, I, I think she is, uh, uh, you know, almost, uh, you know, she's, she looks better than I thought <laughs> we would manage to do it, you know. But it, it, in the beginning, you know, uh, all the drawings I did, you know, was, uh, you know, very similar to how she looks now. And, uh, but uh, she, she came uh, somehow more real because uh, I think the magic was that we used, uh, you know, we worked with like 10 children, four lamps, puppets, and uh, we did all the scenes with all these elements. So somehow, uh, you know, we we felt she was there, you know, uh, when we were shooting somehow. And, she, was, uh, she was there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and I mean, I was mainly acting with like, you know, living like a child or a lamb. They're quite similar. <laughs> they do what they want, <laughs> and uh, we had to be very patient. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and you know, I, I, they also give you all this, uh, you know, unexpected, uh, you know, and uh, somehow it, it feels so real, you know, all, all the things that they do, you know, and uh, uh, you know, for example, uh, you know, when Numi is putting the flower crown on. Uh, the lamp, you know, it was amazing moment, you know, somehow then they really get to, you know, gather. And it was like uh, one of the most <laughs> honest and beautiful moments in my whole acting career, because she was communicating with me all of a sudden. She, she got really still and she put her face close to my face and she started breathing with me. And it was just like time stood still and I was like, and you just kept the camera running. And then, you know, it was really a conversation between us. And she, most of the scene, she was like a child and she wanted to do her own things. But yeah, yeah. in that moment, it was just <laughs> pure like connection. That's amazing. Um, do we have any questions? Wait, I think, yes, one from there. Hi, two questions. Yes. Uh, one, um, is there an Icelandic folk story that you, as people who are not from Iceland, don't quite know about a, a doll or something that is kind of the thing that is there? Lamb that is sort of listed as a backstory for us. Because for me, I see a lot of uh, Christian imagery, which is also biblical, because there's like the Dome of the Dead, uh, that the kills the, the lamb, which is also resonates with Abraham and Isaac, uh, the, the king of the lamb. So is there any background um, of folk stories in Iceland that we don't know about that can be helpful to understand the story a bit more? And the other thing is about how did you manage to uh, control the horses and the lambs or the, the herd in such a <laughs> cinematographically so impressive it's amazing cgi everything <laughs> no, <I'm kidding. laughs> uh, our our folklore you know it, it's uh, what we because we decided we should work with our stories and uh, uh, you know after you know some time we just realized that you know there were there are so, so many of them are so uh, related to you know religious in a way even though you know it's uh, almost the same story sometimes and uh, but and i i know that you know uh, that it's uh, very easy to read something like a something religious out of 
the film and you know there's also a lot of the Icelandic folklore that circles around Christmas there's so yeah. many bad things that happen around Christmas yeah. <laughs> I remember when I moved there when I was five and there was all these like you know if you're not a good girl you know the Yola and like the Christmas cat would come and eat you or Grilla who is like this Icelandic witch she would come and snatch you and eat you it's like all these threats and it's like everything around Christmas I was like I thought this was like a celebration time of love. It's like love. <laughs> so it's like the opening, like when we're standing with the first yeah. scene in the Christmas and you hear this breathing, is like the threat of like something is coming. I mean, that, that, that was kind no, of my feeling. That is true, you know, because we have like a 13, what do you say, Santa Claus? Or, yeah. And they're all bad. You know? Yeah, they are. <laughs> they're evil. <laughs> Yeah, so probably everything is evil around Christmas yeah. in Iceland. So. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, the second question was... Uh, the horses. How did you control the horses? And yeah, and, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, th this was uh, the second take. And uh, uh, somehow, you know, it, 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 it just worked. You know, it was a crazy... But I think you work. have this crazy ability to tune in with um, different creatures, humans and animals, kind of on a non-verbal way. Uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, I, you did you you because you you allow them to be. That was something that I saw. I yeah. saw, you just allow them to be instead of trying to control them, and then they start moving as they do when they're free. Instead of trying to to force them and to to make them do what you want them to do, you allow them to be them. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, you know, and also uh, all this amazing crew. I I think that is uh, a big part of it, you know, because we. Uh, we were working with uh, all these farmers, and uh, you know they they somehow know the animals so well that uh, they knew what they could do, and we just somehow follow. I mean, it was crazy when the lamb, um, the sheep, the sheep gave birth to the to the lamb, or like lambing season started, and I saw one delivery, and then it was I was up, you know, and then my turn to deliver a lamb. <laughs> Never done it before, and he was standing next to the camera, and I was like, what if something goes wrong? And he's like, no, I can tell on her body, you know. He just, he, they were so good with the animals, and he could read her, and it was almost like he was talking to her, like on a non-verbal way, just... So I felt like, you know, the, the people around the animals were really in tune. Mm. And a lot of people in Iceland, like my grandmother, she's she's closer to horses than she is to humans. <laughs> yeah. No, but, you know, it was amazing that, you know, the first day uh, Numi came, she came one day before we start shooting. And the first scene was, uh, you know, deliver a lamb. And then the next scene was uh, driving the tractor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very cute. Yes, gentlemen. I also have two questions. The credits are of course all in Icelandic, but so we couldn't quite understand what the different names meant. But there's uh, a title of a book, Go Back to See, which is mentioned. That's the production company. Oh, that's the production company, right. And another credit that uh, made me wonder was uh, two names Naomi and Balatar, the Hungarian director. What's the connection? Uh, he, he was my mentor. Uh, 2013, I, I I went to a film school in Sarajevo, and Pelatar was my mentor there. And then uh, we had already started working on a lamp. So I, I was uh, so much into that project that somehow I, I didn't uh, do any short films or anything. I, I, but he was uh, always, you know, going through this project with me and uh, and you know, just also bringing all these amazing uh, mentors there. You know, it was a uh, a Peter Pong, Carlos Icatas, uh Yeah, you know, it was uh, like an endless of uh, amazing people, and uh, just how he encouraged me to just do something that you should do totally from your heart. You should not try to, uh, you know, you should do something that you really wanted to do by yourself and you want to see yourself. So and the, the two names, Naomi and Belatar, and the, the word that in Icelandic that you couldn't understand, was that a dedication, of course, or thanks? No, that we are uh, producers. We are producers. Yeah, executive yeah. producers. Mm -hmm. Do they have any other questions? Someone at the, the back, you're going to have to yell, I'm so sorry. Um, the thing I just thought the mother is that 
far is harm, and considering everything that she really had been through as a mother herself, I was sort of wondering how did she get to that place where she had to just access the public boulevard as mother? Um, I think her desperation and her decision to be a mother again and to he somehow heal the old wound by being a mother again is so strong. So she she totally thinks that she has the right to take and that it's hers to have, that all that belongs to her and it's her medicine, it's the cure. And in every kind of obstacle that will kind of threaten that or stand in the way, she will erase or fight. So seen from the angle of you know, desperate mother eyes, she needs, it's her baby now. And then, you know, the mother sheep is not gonna let, let her have it. You know, she keeps kind of interrupting the happiness or this new chapter. So she becomes uh, the enemy that has to go. I guess. I also think that, you know, you know from the beginning that it will not last for, you know, a very long period. Mm. So all the threat, you just somehow get rid of it. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. It slightly reminded me of the Caucasian talk circle when the two mothers mm. are fighting. Pulling and and the one who the real mother lets go because yeah. she can't bear it. Yeah. Whereas you were not real. You you wanted it so much. Yeah. Much. And I lose it in the end. I lose everything in the end. <laughs> Nature comes after me. <laughs> like the film, I, I know I don't mean it offensively at all, but it was like landscape because it was about the lamb and the landscape, the combination. I almost thought, you know, mm. uh, it's just so beautiful and so very, very I mean, that's what I kind of loved when I started to discover Valtimar's visual wo world, that it is images speaks louder than words. And he very much communicate through that. And, and that was my way into the story, you know. So I could just lean back and <laughs> allow myself to drown <laughs> in, the, in the Swedish and Icelandic landscape and let go of everything else, you know. Yeah, and uh, also in the script, you know, the uh, the nature is uh, like a, it, it is a character in the story. Do we have any other questions? I think we've probably got time for one more or so. I can't see any hands. I mean, was this always going to be the ending for you when you wrote it? Was this always going to be what happened? We had a Hollywood version when it was like happy, everyone was happy in the end, and, you know, Adam went to high school. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, I, I wanted to use the cat, you know, for that shot, but, you know, Romeo was not so happy about no, it. No, the cat was the biggest diva on set. <laughs> he never did what we wanted. <laughs> it was like one scene when I was supposed to be sleeping on the bed, and Carlos, we called the cat Carlos, he was supposed to jump up on the bed and he always did it. That was like his favorite spot. And they were like tossing candy on me. And I was like trying to sleep with them. I was like being hit by this cat candy in my face. And then Carlos was just sitting next to the camera like watching the candy fly, not moving. And then it kind of went on for like five minutes. And I was like being really patient, like waiting for the cat to jump up on the bed. And then you said, cut, it's not gonna happen. Oh. Boom, he jumps up on the bed. we are like, roll camera. And he went down again. That was like the story. So uh, I, I definitely knew there was not going to be Carlos in. It was not a Carlos story. No, no, no. Yeah, after that, you know, yeah. Yeah, we just knew. Yeah, that he gonna... missed his mark. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, if I mean, it felt like you knew the ending. You had the ending in you. Yeah, yeah, and, and you know, th this uh, day, you know, and, you know, all the scenes you were doing, it was so, you know, and uh, because I, I was sometimes uh, very worried about Numi because she was, uh, I think she was more Maria than Numi, you know, from the beginning I I, I got to know her and uh, yeah, uh, I, I think, I you know, I think I just saw how uh, much energy and, uh, you know, it's, uh, because I, uh, I, I think it's much harder to act when you don't have much dialogue, you have to give everything or more, so you so the audience believe you know what what you are thinking or feeling. Wonderful. Yeah.
Thank you so much. I mean, that that was wonderful. Thank you so much to you both. Can we please have a huge round of applause? I just want to say thank you so much for coming and see the film. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>